Welcome to the Goodyear City Council meeting. We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of council chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. We ask that you speak clearly into the microphone. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook and YouTube and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you for your participation in tonight's meeting. I'd like to call the meeting to order on July 1st, 2019. Please join Councilmember Pazillo in the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty Father, thank you on behalf of all who are gathered here today. Thank you for your many abundant blessings. I ask that you would graciously grant this council the wisdom to govern, amend the conflicting interests and issues of our time, a sense of welfare and true needs of our people, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, personal peace in their lives and joy in their tasks, protection of all our men and women in uniform serving throughout our country here and abroad. In your name I pray, amen. Thank you, Councilman Pazillo. We have a council person on the line for tonight. Councilman Campbell, are you there? Yes, I'm here, Mayor, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I know it's difficult on the phone. We greatly appreciate it. We have another You're councilman. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Laura Tano will not be here, so could I have a motion and a second to excuse her? Do I hear the motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilmember Stiff and a second from Councilman Hampton. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Wally. I got it. So we're going to have three communication items tonight. The first one, the city will recognize the state legislators of legis legislative districts 4 and 13 for their service during the 2019 legislative session. LD4, Senator Lisa Otondo, Representative Charlene Fernandez, and Gary, no, Payton, yeah, uh, Gary Payton, um, LD13, Senator Messina Kern, and the Representative Joanne Osborne and Tim Dunn. Government Relation Manager Rob Bohr will present. And Rob, will you explain why the names I announced are not here? Okay, thank you. We do have those. 
like the bitter tears that you that you talked about when you talk about I'll get to those individual introductions and then as far as the particular information that I can share for the students that I kick off with this um mention a little bit of hard work and dedication that you guys have put in this year. Absolutely. So thank you to our legislators for joining us earlier this afternoon for a presentation and a tour of, of our economic development department. We really enjoyed being with you during that time. It was a great opportunity to show off some of the exciting projects we have coming to Goodyear. We truly appreciate your dedicated service to Arizona, and we are grateful to have legislators representing Goodyear who are always willing to listen to our perspectives as well as input from our residents. All levels of government are most effective when we work together as a team to represent the best interests of our shared constituents. Opportunities like today help us understand each other's priorities and build a stronger relationship, allowing us to work together more effectively in the future. Our collective hard work resulted in accomplishments this last past legislature session. And we have smiles on our face we uh, greatly appreciate you. And so I'm going to turn it back to Rob. Rob? Yeah, so Mayor, as you mentioned, uh, there was a couple of our, our six legislators were unfortunately unable to make it today. Representative Tim Dunn, this is harvest season and, and um, Representative Dunn is a, is a farmer in, in the Yuma area. So he's under, I understand he's working about 14 hour days right now and it's hard for him to, to get up here at, at this point in time. Um, so he'll be missed, but we'll make sure and get his award and, and get that briefing up. Should also mention we had the economic development briefing and tour with our economic development department today. So we'll make sure and get those who are absent that information. The other is uh, Dr. Jeray Peaton, who's our um, representative in, in Legislative District 4 and actually is a Goodyear re resident and lives in, in the Australia community. And, and much of this idea for the economic development briefing today was actually based on a discussion with her and some interest in some of the projects. So we'll, we'll make sure and get her that information as well and get her, um, her recognition too. But wanted to, to go ahead and introduce, and, and what we'll do, Mayor, is if um, you want to make your way down here, we have some awards for the four legislators who are here this evening. Um, so just uh, quickly introduce of each of them individually, and if we can get a photo of you um, with each of them. And then what we'll do at the end, we'll bring everybody together for a group photo. So we'll start with uh, Legislative District 4 uh, in the Senate, Senator Liso Tondo. So Senator Otondo is one of those that comes to us from Yuma, so make it, always makes trips for things like this. So we greatly appreciate that and all the work that she does. Um, she served four years in the House prior to being in the Senate since 2017. She also serves as a minority co-whip in the House, or I'm sorry, in the Senate. And also in Legislative District 4, we have Representative Charlene Fernandez. Charlene is actually the uh, minority leader in the House of Representatives. <laughs> Charlene also comes to us from the city of Yuma, so we appreciate all the things that she's always coming up here for as well. Thank you. On to legislate, Legislative District 13, uh, Senator Sina Kerr joins us this evening. Um, Senator Kerr is, lives in Buckeye. Uh, her family is a um, dairy farming family, so she's big in the agricultural community and has become a leader in agricultural issues at the state level. Thank you very much. And finally, last but not least, one that probably needs the least introduction to all of you up there, one that served on this city council for, for several years and even on planning and zoning commission in Goodyear before moving on to the House of Representatives, Representative Joanne Osborne, her first year in the state legislature.
Yeah, so if we can get a get council to come down and if you all can step up, if we can get a one group photo before everyone leaves, it'll be great. So Wally, what you missed is the presentation and we missed having you here. Um, but they all want to, the next time you meet them, they want a hug. Okay, so let's get on the next communication item. We'll receive an update on the activities and achievements of the Goodyear Youth Commission during the fiscal year 2019. Assistant to the City Council is John Rader will present. Welcome, John. Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's so good to be before you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you a little bit about some of the amazing co accomplishments of the Goodyear Youth Commission over the year. Uh, just as a matter of review, the Goodyear Youth Commission, according to code, um, can have up to 20 high school students that reside in the city of Goodyear. The Youth Commission is an opportunity for our youth to develop leadership skills and become civically engaged. And just a matter of a, our annual timeline, typically we recruit for new members in May we do vetting and interviews with the council's boards and commissions committee in June. Um, we look to make appointments in July, so that'll be at our next council meeting. And then our new commissioners begin their two-year terms beginning in August. Um, this year, uh, for the last fiscal year, we've had 18 amazing youth commissioners. Um, we had a few of them that were able to attend tonight, and at this time, I'll just ask that they please stand to be acknowledged, but I'd like to also invite them up for a picture after my presentation, Good. if that we'll would be okay. So that. if we could please ask the youth commissioners that are here today to stand up so we can give them a... As you'll see for the, from the presentation, they put in a tremendous amount of work this year, and we greatly appreciate their contributions to the city of Goodyear. So with the commission, we try to do a number of different things. Um, first and foremost, we try to provide them with um, an education regarding how city government works. So we bring in different departments to provide presentations. Um, we look to provide enrichment opportunities through um, conferences and different uh, uh, opportunities outside of uh, presentations strictly from uh, city representatives. We look to provide service and volunteerism in our community. We advise and serve an advisory role for the city council as well as the, uh, the city of Goodyear. We collaborate internally with each other as well as with external partnership or external partners. We look to build friendship. Um, I think it's a really important component of the fact that we're connecting youth um, from different high schools throughout the city and allowing them to interact with peers that they might not normally. And then finally, we look to make an impact on the city of Goodyear and improve the lives of our residents. So one of the, as I've mentioned, one of the major things that we look to do is provide educational opportunities for our youth. Um, as pictured, we were able to visit SRP headquarters in Tempe and learn about Arizona's water history and some of the water challenges we're currently facing. And we also received a tour as pictured here of um, the Arizona Falls. The council was, uh, excuse me, the uh, commission, Good Youth Commission, was able to attend the Arizona League of Cities and Towns Conference at the Phoenician. They interacted in different ways and learned about municipal government, and they also proudly represented the city um, through the um, parade of flags. 
I'd like to extend a thank you to um, Chief Geyer and the entire Goodyear Police Department for providing us a tour of the police operations building, as well as um, a demonstration from the Goodyear K-9 unit. And I'll say Officer K-9 Officer Evo really show, uh, stole the show. Uh, final thing I'd like to mention is just we did were or we were able to send the contingent to the Goodyear's Youth Leadership Conference, where our commissioners learned about important issues impacting Arizona's youth, like teen dating violence. They also received some important presentations about leadership that hope hopefully helps them grow as they continue on. Um, another major component of the work that the Goodyear Youth Commission completed this year was service. When we did our initial planning at the beginning of the year, um, resoundingly all of the commissioners that we selected um, demonstrated an, a strong commitment to serving the community. Um, so for our Domestic Violence Month in October, the youth volunteered at, Hope, volunteered at Hope's Closet um, with New Life Center. Instead of trick-or-treating for candy in October, the group went out and collected canned food in our trick-or-treat so others can eat and donated that food um, to All Face Food Bank. Um, on a very frigid night, um, the Youth Commission went out and sold soda um, for the Culture Pop event, and they donated all of the proceeds from those efforts to the Homeless Youth Connection. They were also busy um, filling boxes for Goodyear families as part of the Goodyear Fill a Need program, and they volunteered at all of the city's signature events, including what is pictured where they're helping with the Goodyear Friends of the Library. And all they volunteered at seven different events for a total of 108 volunteer hours. Um, finally, I'll just mention that the Youth Commission does serve an advisory role for the city of Goodyear. Um, pictured here, we have Bruce walking them through um, the new mascot ideas and designs, and um, the Youth Commission really played an important role in uh, suggesting ideas for the new mascot. Uh, we also uh, recommended different names, and I will say that the commission recommended one, uh, the name Ace, so that, that was one that um, certainly many different people contributed, but the commission also played an important role in the naming. We also worked with Guy and Lean on the design for the public art at the um, the Goodyear Recreational Campus, um, as well as um, we worked with Michael Beadle on uh, getting an update on the Goodyear Recreation Campus and also um, on what the future name of that campus might be. Um, finally, I'd like to um, again extend my appreciation to the council for their support of the Goodyear Youth Commission, as well as our city departments for continuing to engage and work with the Youth Commission. Um, coming up in 2020, uh, we'll be planning a trip to the NLC conference, thanks to uh, the budgeted amount and this year's uh, Goodyear budget. Uh, we're also working in collaboration with Leadership West on a youth leader, a West Valley Youth Leadership Day, um, and we'll continue to look for opportunities to engage in service and volunteerism, like at Make a Difference Day and Youth Service Day. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, I'm sure there's some praise going on coming from this. Who would like to talk? Councilman Bazillo? Listen, I, I appreciate all the efforts that you're doing too as well and all the team members that you have out there. Um, hopefully there are future leaders and hopefully they're getting experience as well on how cities operate so that when it's time for them to step up, they'll have a good understanding of, of what their role would be. So again, congratulations for all of you out there and uh, John for you shepherding it. I think cities are stronger when we have a multi-generational approach. And I just uh, love the, the heart of service that our youth have. So I just want to say thank you. Look forward to see what your vision is for 2020 because I, I believe it'll be big and exciting. And thank you, John, for your work. Any other comments? Yes. Councilman Stiff? Just to the few members of the council that, or of the Youth Commission that are here, um, thank you very much for serving your community. It's a great way to start your uh, your young uh, young life of of giving to others. And uh, if those that are here are leaving, thank you for your service. If those that are here that are staying, we look forward to another great year. Thank you, Councilman Hampton. It's hard to follow, but thank you. John, thank you for the, the Youth Commission for all the effort that they put into it. I think it's a great 
a great use of our time to uh, help encourage and keep involved the youth in Goodyear and develop those future leaders for the community and also for for wherever they go in their post high school endeavors as well. So, so thank you. They did a lot of a lot of good efforts throughout the community, and I'm looking forward to next year as well. So thank you. Well, John, thank you for such a great job. You know, the nice thing about having youth come and actually do something for a city and city government kind of gives them a different look, uh, kind of trains them that government isn't all bad, but that government does a lot of very good things. And I think that's the experience they're going to get out of it. And the joining in and the, the camaraderie and the service that they've certainly given during their time. So good job. I felt, saw some different things this year. So I'm sure they greatly appreciated that. So thank you, John. Uh, thank you very much, Mary. And with that, um, we wanted a picture. Yeah, we again. It's a we only have a few of them that were able to attend this evening. Ever say a it. few? That's okay. Doesn't yeah. matter. Uh, yeah. So all right, let's take the picture quickly. If, if the youth commission could please come up, that are here, and if the council could no, make their I way to the front. To direct us. Where do you want yeah. them? Down there. All right, last communication item is recreation staff will provide a reminder and updates for the Star Spangled fourth, ev fourth event to be held at Goodyear Ballpark on July 4th from 6 to 9.30 p.m. Welcome. Thank this you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, thank you. I just want to quickly echo the sentiments for John and the mission. I have put them through a really cold night at Culture Pop and a very hot day at Hop and Hop, so I think I'll give them a break on the 4th. Yes. And to that, just want to kick it off and talk about what we're doing this year. So it's going to be on the 4th this year, just like every year, um, 6 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. at the Goodyear Ballpark. So not too much has changed, but we have thrown in some things that will liven it up for the crowds that come every year. Just like always, free admission and parking, but something we've added this year are the zip line and the carnival swing are actually free. It used to be something that you would buy a ticket or a wristband for. That's an enhancement that we've added this year that we wanted for every event we're adding enhancements. That's gonna be the one we're doing this year. So we anticipate long lines and kids having fun while they wait for the sun to go down. Of course, we're gonna have dry and wet inflatables. So get the kids energy out, but also keep them hydrated and put them on the slides. And we're doing some really fun glow giveaways. We're gonna light up the night with some glow batons that are patriotic and some glow necklaces. And also we're going to have some fans with the program on it as well. We're gonna have live music, which council member Pazillo, we've already put in some requests for some of your favorite songs. Um, and as always, the concessions will be open to keep everyone cool and fed. The timeline for the event, Doors are gonna open at 6 p.m. Of course, that's when all of the activations and games will open as well. The live music will begin at 7 p.m. And then the much anticipated beach ball release at 7.30. And I'm sorry, that's a typo. That's gonna be 8.40. And then immediately following, we're going to go into an acapella version of the national anthem to really captivate the crowd and get the fireworks started. So we hope to see you there. Come beat the heat with us and have fun at the 4th. Well, thank you. We always look forward to this. Any comments or any questions you have? 
Good job. Thank you. It's going to be lots of fun for everybody. Just stay hydrated. <laughs> All right, now we're going to consent agenda. Uh, I, oh, we have no consent agenda items tonight, so I'd like to just move on then to the business. The first item of business is to consider adopting the 2019-1977 supporting the recommended corridor alternative for the Interstate 11 alignment in Goodyear. Engineering Director Rebecca Zook will be presenting. Rebecca? Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. I'm here before you seeking approval of the resolution supporting the I-11 recommended corridor alternative extending from Nogales to Wickenburg. The concept of this north-south corridor has been in discussions for over 25 years. In 2015, the Fixing America's Surface Transportation Act, or FAST, formally designated I-11 as a proposed transportation route in Arizona. So then in 2016, the Federal Highway Administration and the Arizona Department of Transportation began the process of studying potential corridors for the I-11. After approximately three years of extensive public outreach, numerous meetings, technical analysis, and consultation with federal, local, and state governments, tribal governments, planning departments, and utilities company, utility companies, FHWA and ADOT are presenting the I-11 draft Tier 1 Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, and preliminary Section 4F evaluation for comment. The analysis studied three different corridors, and then it also included a no-build corridor. The following are just some of the criteria that they studied during the evaluation. Minimizing potential uh, impact to existing developments, minimizing potential impacts to the 100-year floodway and floodplains, avoiding, avoiding or minimizing impacts to the 4F properties such as public domed parks, recreation areas, wildlife, avoiding or minimizing impacts to national parks or national monuments wilderness or wilderness areas, avoiding tribal lands, ability to co-locate rail and utility facilities in the future if desired, and then ultimately an alignment that could support a 75 mile an hour per de design speed. not working at all all right okay um, the the draft report presents a recommended corridor alternative which is uh, 2,000 feet wide uh, and is a hybrid of three different studied corridors the corridor serves both existing and emerging economic activity centers and provides for connections between employment hubs and the broader population the comment period for the draft EIS extends until July 8th or next Monday. The next steps based on comments that uh, FHWA and ADOT receives from the public and agencies, tribes and stakeholders, they will take these comments and then uh, consider them and ultimately they will identify a preferred corridor. Then in early 2020, the final report will have another opportunity to come before the public for a 30-day review period. And again, that'll be in early 2020. Following the comment period for that, they will move into a record of decision and identify a selected corridor alternative. The next stage will then move into the tier two studies, which at this time, no dates have been selected. During that stage though, I would add that the 2000 foot corridor we're studying today would then be decreased to approximately a 400 foot corridor, which would be the ultimate corridor for the I-11 if constructed. This evening, I am requesting that council approve the recommended corridor alternative with the exception of an area near the intersection of Willis Road and Rainbow Valley at this location and for approximately one mile, I am recommending that the city accept the alignment to be located in the westernmost 400 feet 
of the 2,000 foot alignment. So what I mean by that, and I wish I had a photo, but what I mean by that is the, the corridor that's being studied today is 2,000 feet wide. That's to allow for there to be flexibility if when they go out and do the study, they encounter anything that would require them to move um, slightly off of that 2,000 feet. They will only need a 400 foot corridor for the ultimate alignment. So with respect to the location near the Canamia development that houses approximately 1,500 homes, we're recommending that the 2,000 foot corridor be limited to the 400 feet westernmost, which would put it further away from Canamia and that intersection. Uh, with that, um, I also um, had, uh, have the website for anyone to make comments or look at the maps. They have a really nice website, talks about all of the different um, meetings that they've held, provides role plots for people to look at, and an interactive GIS map where they can look uh, closely with the aerial on to see the different locations, and that's at i11study.com forward slash Arizona. Uh, with that, I would uh, conclude my presentation and I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Rebecca. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Then will the city clerk please read resolution number 2019-1977 by title only, please. Adopt resolution number 2019-1977 supporting the recommended corridor alternative for the Interstate 11 alignment from Nogales to Wickenburg, presented by the Arizona Department of Transportation, ADOT, within the city of Goodyear. All right, can I have a motion a second to adopt resolution number 2019-1977? Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Kano, a second from Councilman Stipp, open for a council discussion. Councilman Stipp. Rebecca, I just wanna make sure that the motion includes your exclusion um, for those that aren't looking at the document. Okay. We're not making an, our exception is already noted in the documents. It is, it is in the resolution, absolutely. Thank you for that question. Councilman Kano? Does the alignment as shown on the map that we're able to see, does it cross over Cantamia at all? I mean, is it is it within the Cantamia boundaries as it were? Uh, no, it is not. The, okay. um, thank you for that question. The eastern boundary of that 2,000 foot corridor runs along Rainbow Valley. Okay. So it extends 2,000 feet to the west from that Rainbow Valley alignment. And so again, we're looking at the 400 feet uh, furthest to the west. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Councilman Hampton. So I, I'm thinking from reading through the staff analysis, is it, it does connect up to the existing 303 eventually? Or does it replace the 303? So the alignment itself, the preferred corridor they came up with, actually um, runs on either existing interstates or already proposed alignments for the vast majority of it. So within the city of Goodyear, it is located within or very close to the already uh, selected Loop 303 alignment that has been accepted through our general plan. Okay, so someone might be able to connect to the 303 and the I-11 potentially. So the I-11 will be located in a sense on top of the Loop 303 and then as it um, uh, extends north and hits where the proposed SR-30 that's where then the 303 might branch off and go north, or you could go east and west on the proposed SR-30. Okay. And then does this also connect, it's hard to see in the map, I probably should show that website that you just mentioned, but um, is there a, does it connect up to Mobile as well, or South Goodyear also? Uh, yes, it does, it extends, um, uh, and thank you for the question, the mayor asked me that question earlier, and it does extend southward along the, again, Loop 303 alignment and passes through Mobile. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Council Member Campbell, are you still there? Yes, thank you, but Rebecca's answered all my questions because um, the only really concern that I had was expressed to me by some folks 
a couple of weeks ago that they felt this new alignment would destroy approximately 3,000 farm acres of farmland, and they were concerned with it, um, but they didn't have a plan to um, offer to make it any better. So um, I don't have any further questions. Everything has been answered tonight, and as Rebecca said, this is it, it's going to come back several times before the final plan is done anyway. Thank you for your comments. All right. Uh, so we're ready for a roll call vote. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Councilman Campbell, they're asking for your vote. Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right. So let's the last item on business is to consider adopting 2019-1979 for a job creation agreement with Nike IHM Inc. Our economic director, dir uh, director, excuse me, Lori Gary will say a few words and then we will hear from the economic development project manager, Harry Paxton. Lori? Thank you. Uh, Mayor Lord, Vice Mayor Stiff, and members of the council. This evening, it is my pleasure to introduce you to a Fortune 100 company who has selected Goodyear for its next advanced manufacturing facility. After a long and extensive search, Nike IMH Inc., a wholly owned subsidiary of Nike Inc., chose Goodyear, Arizona for its state-of-the-art, innovation-centric production facility. Nike IMH Inc. also does business or also is known as Air Manufacturing Innovation, or you may also hear it called as Air MI. A project of this nature, as you know, does not happen in a silo. We are so thankful that our partners are with us on this project. Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Arizona Commerce Authority, and APS all took part in helping bring this to fruition. There are two representatives here from the company this evening, and I am confident you will hear more from them later. However, right now, I'd like Harry Paxton, our Economic Development Project Manager, um, I'd like him to come up so he can share with you additional details about the project, as well as additional details on the job creation agreement, which is before you this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome, Harry. Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's my privilege tonight to present to you the proposal for a job creation agreement for Nike IHM. As, as Lori explained, Nike Incorporated is an international manufacturer of footwear. We probably all know that, apparel and equipment and accessories. In fact, they're the largest supplier of athletic shoes and apparel in the world. And Nike IHM is a wholly owned subsidiary of Nike. What's being considered here is a very innovative portion of what they do. In fact, what they're a big part of what they're really known for is the air cushioning system. That component, similar to those that are displayed there on the screen, is what's contemplated to be manufactured here. And that is primarily manufactured only in, in the U.S. The new facility here in Goodyear will be the third plant in the United States and equipped with the latest high-tech equipment. So the agreement provisions, um, or excuse me, I think we just skipped over one. Here we go. Selecting Goodyear, I want to give you a little bit of an idea as to the process that we went through. Lori had mentioned that it was an extensive search, and we were fortunate in April to be contacted um, by their consultant about our opportunity to work with them. And then, of course, we worked with the Arizona Commerce Authority, GPAC, and APS primarily um, to bring this to you tonight. Goodyear was selected for several factors. One, as we've talked about before, our available and qualified workforce, um, available building, spec buildings, an expedited process, and I have to give a lot of thanks to our Development Services Department to coming up with an innovative way. One of the key things uh, for this company was their ability to open their doors as soon as possible and begin um, production. And so an expedited process where we're going to review the plans, one and done, so to speak, as our 
uh, Development Services Director coined it in a simple way is through um, an agreement process of understanding how they're going to submit and a, a negotiated time schedule will be able to do that and help them. That was a key factor in us, I believe, in, in bringing this product uh, or this proposal to you. And then, of course, as we'd mentioned, APS, robust and reliable power grid, um, is also very um, important for this, this client. So they expect to be purchasing an existing building in the city of Goodyear and operate in approximately initially 500,000 square feet with also the room to expand. So the, some of the facts in the agreement are they will create 505 full-time positions. The city is proposing to fund full-time positions that pay an annual wage of at least 42614 which is 125% of the state median wage which is that high wage manufacturing job that we are seeking. That does include overtime and bonuses in this proposal. Weighted average salary, there's also a requirement there for phase one employees, meaning taking all the employees together, um, should be at 48,514 annually. Nike also, as we um, always require, they will pay 65% of the employee's health insurance premium at least. And then they'll also invest $184.5 million in capital equipment and tenant improvements in phase one. So the City of Goodyear agreement provisions, those things that are being proposed to you tonight, is to waive and reimburse or reimburse 75% of all non-expedited plan review and permit fees, and then 100% of those that are expedited um, up to a total amount of $994,810 for phase one. Job creation funding up to a maximum of $1,020,000 with a maximum payment of $204,000 annually. And the city also agrees, as I mentioned earlier, to process attendant improvement plans on an expedited basis after only one review. The economic impact of this project is, is significant. Applied economics, as we always do, we go out and get a third-party economic analysis as to what the estimated impacts are to the city um, that give us a total economic impact of over $483.4 million in a five-year period of this agreement and increased property and sales tax revenues generated by Nike as well as its employees, vendors, and service providers provide a significant economic impact. In addition, direct revenue to the city is estimated over the five-year period to be $7.6 million. So significant um, revenues to the city. With that, any questions you have for me or I'm sure Lori would be happy to, to answer any questions you might have for us. Thank you very much, Harry. That was very clear and concise. Um, would the um, applicant like to speak or... Sure, let me take a minute and just introduce them. We have here tonight with us um, Julia Brim Edwards, who's a Senior Director of Government, Government and Public Relations for Nike, and also Lalit Montero, Montero, who is the Vice President of Air Manufacturing and Innovation. I'd like to invite them to come forward at this time. Thank you very much, Harry. Welcome. Uh, um, thank you, Mayor Lord, uh, Vice Mayor Stiff, and uh, members of the council. Really appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, listen to our proposal today. Um, and I want to thank the city of Goodyear for all the work they've done in getting us to this point. Also, the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, which has been a huge help, and of course, the state of Arizona. Thank you all. It's been a great uh, experience working with your teams here. Um, so I want to speak a little bit about Nike Air Manufacturing Innovation. So uh, you might not have heard about it because it is a subsidiary of Nike, but you've probably all heard about Nike Air. Nike Air, and I would like to show you rather than just uh, talk about it, is a very technical component. So it's that part of a shoe. It is uh, something that we've been making for 40 years, but this visible air product only came out in 1987. We have two facilities here in the United States, one in Oregon, the other one in Missouri. This will be our third facility here. 
and it is very high-tech manufacturing. The film that is used to make this component is made up of, let me do the math here, 72 layers, 68 of those layers alternate together and of the thickness of two human hairs. The equipment to require to make this is specialized. It comes from multiple manufacturers and to assemble it takes over 25 truckloads of equipment. We'll be putting several of those machines in this facility approved. So it's highly automated, very technical. Our um, subsidiary right now employs 160 engineers and about eight PhDs. Um, and that's required to not only maintain the current uh, plant and technologies, but to drive innovation. We're not just air manufacturing, we're air manufacturing innovation. So we're excited to partner with you. Thank you so much for that information. Yeah. May I approach the podium to show you a couple samples? And you would pick red as the color. That's wonderful. Well, just in case. We, we, we can see it for sure. All right, ladies, let's give up our heels. <laughs> I think this will work. Would you like to see that? Oh, turquoise. We like to say you're walking on air. I know you want this back. <laughs> yeah. well, well, you know, it's only half a pair, so. <laughs> okay, all right. Or as my wife says, one shoe. <laughs> yes. All right, thank you very much thank for you. your presentation yeah, and the thank information you. and letting us look at this. So we're now at the time, I think, that we're going to look into this. So let's have a motion and a second. You're looking at me. Gonna read it first. Oh, just wanted to know if you wanted to. I don't think there's any speakers read the here. Read resolution. But what? I, I have to read the resolution. That's what I said. Read the resolution. Okay. All right. City Clerk, would you please read the resolution? Adopt resolution number 2019-1979, approving, authorizing, and directing the city manager to execute a job creation agreement for Nike IHM Inc., authorizing city staff to take actions consistent with terms of resolution and agreement, and providing for an effective date. Thank you. So can I have a motion a second to adopt resolution number 2019-1979? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Hampton, a second by Councilman Stipp. I'm going to open the council discussion, but I'm going to go to Councilman Campo, who's on the phone. Wally? Well, I'm sorry I didn't get to feel the red shoe, but it looked wonderful, and I'll take one in turquoise. <laughs> I'll, I'll put your uh, order We're in. delighted. Thank you very much. We are delighted to welcome Nike to the Goodyear family, and we're delighted that you want to come and um, uh, build your facility in our city, and we welcome you, and we look forward to a long-lasting relationship. Thank you, Wally. Next, Councilman Pazillo. Uh, for those that are watching this in the audience, this isn't the first time we've seen this. So uh, many hard hours from our staff, economic development, um, the engineering department, those are going through the building permits. Uh, you got a hands off uh, tip of the hat for you for doing that because uh, it took all those efforts to put this fruition. Second thing I just want to mention is a welcome board. We're looking for a long and prosperous relationship between Nike and the city of Goodyear. And I'm glad that you have chosen us as your location. Councilman Mekano. Well, certainly Nike is going to be a welcome addition to our technology corridor, and it, it's quite an honor to have you. I also want to thank GPEC and Arizona Commerce Authority and APS, because without that partnership, it would not come to fruition. Uh, certainly the many great attributes Goodyear has is backed by that collaborative effort and the power and all, the, and all that it takes to make this happen. Again, staff, you're just outdoing yourself. It gets, just gets better and better. So welcome to Goodyear. We're thrilled to have you. Councilman Hampton. I'm going to echo. So, yes, thank you and welcome to Goodyear. We're so excited to have you and looking forward to the great partnership together. And our staff does do a great job. So thank you. I keep hearing over and over again how great they are to work with for all of our new employee employers coming to our city. So we are looking forward to a long, great community relationship with Nike in our community. And uh, thank you so much for a uh, welcome to the community. So thank you. Vice Mayor Stipp. I have to obviously as the last speaker echo everything that we've uh, that we've heard already, but um, 
it's my understanding that Nike not only comes into the community to pursue their manufacturing operation, but also becomes a true community partner. And uh, as everyone has pointed out, this whole uh, siting couldn't have been done without the partnerships that we have with the state, with GPEC, uh, and then the partnerships within the various departments in the city. So um, I'm particularly, lo particularly looking forward to uh, the community partner uh, that we're gonna have in the Nike Corporation. Um, Harry, I do have a question for, again, for those that are watching. Um, this job creation agreement uh, is not unlike any other one we've done. This isn't anything different than we've done in the past. Is that Mayor and, and good Vice Mayor. Generalization. Vice Mayor Stitt. Yes, it's, it's very similar to other ones. There are often a little bit different. In this case, um, there is not a property tax uh, benefit for this one. There's not a foreign trade zone benefit. There is a higher amount uh, than some other agreements we've done in terms of the job creation uh, funding. Uh, but then there's not the property tax uh, benefit that this project will receive given that they don't qualify for a foreign trade zone. It's, it's great that we've got all these tools available to us. So, um, you know, thank you to Lori and Harry and the rest of the staff and the team over at Economic Development. Looking forward to it. Thank you. So you're not last, the mayor is. So you always say that, but then as I'm the last. Um, so I just want to thank the staff from the city manager down to the base where the economic development has to handle this. And you do a great job. The idea that you're expedited things, that's attractive to companies. That saves money. That's, that's you know, that gets them in quickly. So all the process, the continuum is done, everything that you staff have done, and I say this every time, but it's so true. We wouldn't be here without your cooperation and your working together and counsel us as a team. It takes all of that for this to happen. So when people say, look what's happening in Goodyear, there's a reason. You work hard for this. So let's vote for this, all right? So roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stitt? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Motion carries. Welcome to Goodyear. <laughs> Mayor, if I could just have one minute. They would like to come forward that. and, and uh, present a small memento of this occasion to the mayor and the council. I was just going to say, to celebrate this uh, big milestone for the project, we just wanted to present you with a couple things from ARMI, um, and I would definitely recommend switching from heels. May we approach the dais? As Julie is doing that, I just want to echo the great work your staff has done. It's been awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And this is the layers. Any other comments before we go on? I think everybody has a happy smile on their face. And they did say it's under $50. <laughs> Just want to check that. <laughs> All right. So we're nearing the end of this meeting. So does the city manager have anything to report? Thank you, Mayor and Council. I uh, just wanted to um, highlight that today started our new residential trash service with uh, right away disposal, other otherwise known as RAD. Uh, they started providing service this morning in the Palm Bar Valley area where the day had changed in the route uh, from Tuesday to Monday. Um, our team answered calls from residents mostly for clarification of collection times and no major issues were reported. 
The change has been communicated to residents over the past several weeks through InFocus, social media, HOA management, and door hangers for areas where day changes were done. July 4th is the first observed holiday and there will be no trash, recycling, or bulk collections. Those impacted should plan for collection on the day after the regularly scheduled pickup. Um, also, city offices will be closed in observance of Independence Day on Thursday, July 4th. Emergency fire and police services will operate as normal and will not be affected. Ev wishing everyone a safe and happy 4th of July. Thank you very much. Uh, I just remind us we have another meeting yet, so we'll be holding a special meeting as soon as we're, this meeting is adjourned. And after that, the next meeting will be a regular meeting on July 8th, 2019 to 6th. Uh, the council will then be on a break until August 19th, 2019. Won't that be fun? So there being no further business discussed, this regular meeting is adjourned.